All right, let's pick up where we left off, which was, well, right out here in this desert, or next to the set desert. How did I know there was a desert? Oh, secret. Uh, so, oh, there's that random encounter. I knew there'd be one in there somewhere. Let's toss some dark at these guys, just to show it off a little bit more. Uh, you will notice that it does do a bit of damage to Zizzle when he uses it, or after he uses it. And it does a decent amount of damage to all targets on the field, which is a benefit. A definite benefit. Which I suppose is probably why they took it out of the original. I guess they could have made it a little amount, but like I said before, early on, you're just kind of supposed to be taking advantage of the fact that you are beating up on the weakest enemies anyway, so... Not really a cutscene per se, but a little bit of a story-driven event here. And we get in a little fight with these guys. Generally, the general, generally the general, uh, you want to kind of take out the soldiers. Uh, and when you take out all the soldiers, the general runs away. Well, to take advantage of the fact that we can, you know, kick some ass and milk some experience out of it, it's always best to kind of leave one soldier around. That way you can actually just sit here and beat on the general. And it's not a huge difference, but Every little bit will help in the early game, and you might as well level off the things you're going to be doing anyway. Rather than, you know, go grind combat for the level you need. Now, I, like I said, I will be grinding any grinding that I need to do off screen, uh, except for a little bit coming up here. And it's mainly because it's maybe four or five fights all that's needed. And you'll kind of see what I'm talking about here as soon as we kill this general. Who doesn't do anything himself, he just kind of tells this guy to attack and does some negligible damage. Come on, general. There we go. You actually do end up netting uh, a good chunk of experience out of it too, 800. Definitely enough to level out of that. As opposed to, you know, we'll be getting uh, maybe 100 or so out of most combat. Hey, you really joined the party. Hooray! The only downside to this... Uh, we'll see you once I get the chance to take over my controller again. Take over my character. Yeah, she starts at level 1. She is, does, however, have a decent amount of equipment for just some random girl. So, there's a few people you can talk to around here. The only people you really... I mean, if you've never played the game before, you might want to talk to this guy, because he tells you that the Antlion Cave is the east, and only the royals are allowed there. Why is that important? Well, because... This house over here... Here. Has an unconscious girl from Baron that just fell down out of the town. Oh, and knows us. Gee. 
Yep. And this guy says, oh, hey, you need sand ruby. And we know where that place is. Now we need to go there. But to get there, we need to talk to you. one of these people. No, get out of my way. North. North is where the castle is. One of these people tells you where the water passage is. Where is it? There we go. This is where we need to go. That's the only path from here up to Mycian or Domitian or Sahagwan. Sagwans. Before we go wandering into that cave, however, we're gonna wanna pick up a little bit of experience from. Where's all the random? There we go. The game's very inconsistent sometimes about the random combat. We do want to pick up a little bit of experience here from Rydia, and we do want to use this rod as an item, because it actually is a lot more potent that way. And it's just kind of something I just picked up uh, from watching some other playthroughs. I, I know I didn't use any of these. Well, but some of these early items as actual items, or the early weapons. Because it was, you know, one of those things. It didn't have, a, uh, like, an element name to it, so I, you know, just assumed. But, strangely enough, it is a magical spell, and it does damage from the back row as well. Hey, Blizzard and Cure. I guess technically we're not priming per se, we're just fighting the guys that we'd be fighting to get in the cave anyway. But I do want to fight for one more, one more dude. And we'll show off Blizzard real quick. Have some Blizzard. Not very effective. Try to steal my mana. My magic points, or whatever you want to call it. And Cecil has none of those. Foolish bug. Uh, also, I need to remind myself to change her row. One of the first things she probably should do is, especially since she starts at level 1, you don't want her getting, you know, critical in the face early on. And... Hey, Sight. Let's show off Sight real quick because it's kind of not a very useful spell. kind of shows off a location, and since we don't have a lot of locations, let's confirm. Sure, okay. Thanks. <sighs> okay, well, oh, yeah, I did want to show off. I did want to get one more fight in before I go and use a tent. Because I want to get one more spell before we go into this cave. And I still didn't keep her row. My brain is very bad about these things sometimes. It is very not good to see. That's that kind of stuff can happen whenever you're whenever you're foolish and leave people in the row that they're not supposed to be in. I don't think I have. Oh, I do have the mana to cure myself. Well, I'll have her cast cure. That'll get her back up from out of the danger that I left her in. Oh, awesome. Alright, and I believe for some reason that poison powder inflicts blindness? I'm not quite sure as to why, but... She didn't get the spell, did she? Ah. Alright, well, you know what? She'll get it right inside the cave anyway, so we're gonna use a tent real quick. Recover. I kinda wanted to make sure she had the spell 
before we came in here, but I guess we can live. Because we'll get it pretty quickly. Some items. Oh, she still has blindness, doesn't she? Oh, no, she doesn't. Thankfully that... Okay, we need to move. You'll notice the... The rows have the, their own, like, set positions. Like, uh... The 1, 3, and 5 slots are always opposite of the 2 and 4 slots as far as the row goes. So you can only either have 3 people front, 2 back, or 2 people front, and 3 back at any one time. We find an old man. Make haste. But we don't have that spell yet. Whoa. whoa, whoa. Oh, how does my. Not only is my brain very bad, it's also full of crap tons. Alright, so. Ah, uh, damn, I should have moved him too. So, <laughs> tell him who's joined. So, at least he has hit points. You'll notice he actually has more hit points than Cecil does at the moment. So, that's the type of spell that I want. Thunder is actually very. Water bugs. Uh, the wild shells, I'm sorry. The water bugs are just nuisances. Who will cast renew every time you hit them with a spell or a spell object such as the rod? They're also very resilient, but at the same time, they don't really do a lot. Like I said, they only cast that renew, they might attack once in a while, and then they'll run. That's usually how the fight goes. And you'll notice we kind of miss out on some experience and gold for that, but... Hey, and we got the thunder spell that would have been great to have. And again, with kind of the inconsistency in the... Uh, in the... Random encounter chances here. One second we go from, you know, not running into anybody for a while, to you know, running into guys every three or four steps, and it kind of, I guess part of the problem is that it kind of penalizes exploration, especially when you would explore, you know, a new cave for the first time, or find those, I don't know, I'm just trying to call, that never work, but I will explain the call a little bit in a second, but yeah, I mean, I guess it's part of the pro- oh, hey, it actually worked this time. Uh, let me go ahead and explain that. Uh, recall randomly supposed to recall up one of this uh, tell us forgotten spells and it can cast our any random white or black spell from his repertoire on the enemies or whoever you you know send him oh send him to attack well usually a lot of times he'll just move forward and cast a little uh, there'll be a little explanation point and he'll just kind of run back don't have me. I do have Cure, and Cure does damage to Undead. Not very much, but it does some damage to Undead. As physical attacks, as you can see, do not. Hurry! Burn the zombies alive. Or, well, not really alive, they're undead. So. Let's move him to the proper position. We've got. We've got some items. We're gonna use some potions that. Oops, oops, oops. One too many. up here and pick up uh, an item up here. Iron Ring, which we can equip on Tella. Because he's actually a little bit more under equipped than uh, Rydia was starting out. And 
pick up some secret little hidden items after we fight these giant toads. To either thunder or ice. Eh, it's more ice. That's okay. We've got ice too. Yeah, definitely ice. Definitely, definitely ice. Not a hard little fight at all, but we can sneak in here and get some decent items. Just Phoenix down, which is always important to have. Especially when you have a bunch of weak wizards rolling around with you. Now we can go up here and find them. Get out of this room, maybe. No, I'll we'll never get out of this room. We will... Shoot our rod at the water bug there. Oh, we still need more mana. Or MP. Then we have to. Uh, you know what? Actually, let's do this because this works surprisingly well against the water bug. And in fact, it's one of the best things to do while he's just sitting around is drain his mana. Or. MP, uh, whatever you want to call it. Essentially, Osmos will uh, drain off the enemy's magic points and give them to you, and it seems to work rather effectively against the water bugs. Uh, doesn't really have anything. You know what? No, let's not waste his stuff on him. Screw it. Just attack. And not hit, of course. The reason why I'm not really editing out a lot of this combat is because I kind of want to, again, take everybody along for the ride that is um, Final Fantasy IV. And that's kind of the... that means the good and the bad, which the bad is obviously the, the poor... The poor... well, I don't, I don't know how to say it really, it's just the... the uh, the randomness isn't really as random as it probably should be. Um, I think that's probably why a lot of a lot of games kind of messed around with that formula early on. Uh, kind of, you know, went from random encounters to uh, you know enemies on the map to kind of a, a mix of things where they were random, but you could see them and you could try to avoid them. Sort of like a you know Zelda two thing. And it's another thing where uh, you can tell a lot of the games gave uh, kind of gave the player uh, a bit of an out as far as the random encounters go because there's always some items in the newer uh, games where you can kind of negate the random encounters entirely, which I think is probably a uh, definitely a good idea, because there's just a lot of games where you really don't want to mess with the, the combat. You want to get from point A to point B, or you want to explore a cave. You want to be able to do things without this. And I mean, every once in a while, not a big deal. But when it's like, you know, constant issue that you have to deal with, you, know, you can't you don't want to go get treasure chests because you're going to fight seven guys on the way over to it and it turns out to be a potion. I mean, it's... it almost makes... you know, you really want to use a... a, a walkthrough, even though it's not even really necessary. Like this here, like you come up right here... fortunately I didn't hit anything, but it's only just a potion. I mean, there's... No reason for you to really run up there and that entire stretch there I didn't have a single encounter. 
but we'll probably have like three before I get to the other side. This rock formation. I kind of figured I'd share a few little tales about the good old days of, you know, the Final Fantasy game. I'm sure uh, a lot of other people had this same sort of, uh, oh, I'm going to do come on, controller. Uh, same sort of, like, setup. Uh, I had a few buddies that lived on the street um, with me, and we all had Super Nintendo's. And it was one of those things that uh, kind of had to trade off what games you had if you wanted to, you know, borrow other people's games. And it was like a rule. Like, uh, I believe... Uh, I think I had Final Fantasy 2 and somebody else had Final Fantasy 3. Uh, and we pretty much, like, always had this rule where if you wanted to play the other game, if you're gonna play 2, you're gonna have to trade me 3 for it while you're playing 2. I mean, uh, we literally probably you know, beat each one of those games like you know, three or four times during that generation. Because uh, we didn't really play a lot of the other games. Like, you know, we played some Mario, we played some F Zero, and some, you know, some stuff like that. But like, the core of what we played was, uh, you know, these RPG games, and uh, you know, it was one of those things. Like I said, we kind of switched off and kind of had our, you know, times back and forth with it. Hey, we're going to get a tutorial about save spots. So we've got some creatures and stuff to deal with here in the water passageway. Uh, as that one kid said in town, we've got eight serpents hanging around in here somewhere. We, on the other hand, are going to save for now and come back to that at another time. Because, well, let's just say, there's still a, uh, a few more minutes to go in this and I don't want to don't want to get you guys stuck in, you know, 40 minutes of the video. So, check real quick and see. Can I speak message? Save it like this, and oops, and we'll call it good. Alright, till next time, folks. Have a good one.